Hi, this is Abiola Davy. In today's end-to-end -end data engineering and data analysis project, I'm going to show you how to use Fabric Data Pipeline to schedule loading of 34 millions of rows from SQL Server to Fabric Warehouse. And we're going to build a Power BI report on top of that data. The first thing we want to do is to go to our web and I've got this mirror workspace created. We want to actually click on this little download and they want to choose data gateway. And then, of course, we need to download the standard data gateway and then just follow the prompt to install it on your local laptop. So basically, once you click on the installation, you're going to put in your email address and then your passcode and so on and so forth. And that's going to be installed on your local laptop. And of course, in my case, on-premises data gateway is fully installed and it is ready for use. So I'm not going to close. I'm just going to leave it. That's the very first thing we need to do. And then I'm going to go back to app.powerbi.com. Next, we're going to create connections to our on-premises SQL server. So we're going to click on the settings and then we're going to come to the manage connections and gateways. So in this case, I've got no connections because I just deleted everything just to show you how to do this project clean. We want to come to this on-premises data gateway and I can check my cornerstone solutions data gateway which is working. And of course, this is standard and then we can see the status is online and then we have one gateway. So I'm going to come back to these connections. I'm going to click on this new button at the top left hand corner and then I can specify the connection credentials. Now this is going to be on-premises because this is what we need to use to connect to our SQL server. So for the cluster name i'm going to choose the cornerstone solution gateway i just installed and then for the connection name i'm going to call it connect to sql server and then for the connection type i'm going to click on this chevron and then i'm going to scroll down to sql server and then select that and for the server name i'm going to come to my ssms sql server management studio and I can see the name of my server, which is Abiola David. And of course, this is going to be the name of the database. So I'm going to F2 this database name, Control C, Escape to step out. And then I'm going to head over and type my server name, which is Abiola David 01. And then for the database name, I'm going to Control V to paste and scroll down. Please make sure your data gateway is online for this to work. It is important. This data gateway is online for this to work. So I'm going to go on and for the authentication mode, I'm going to click on the Chevron and choose basic. And then for the username, I'm going to use my SA account and then I'm going to type in my password. And I'm going to scroll down for the privacy level. I'm going to choose none and then click on create. Now, if your data gateway is not online, you're going to see an error prompt at the top, but mine is online. So I can, so I can see created connect to SQL Server. So I'm going to close this window and we can see this has been created. Next, we need to create one more connection to our ADLS Azure Data Lake Storage because that's very important for the staging environment. So I'm going to click on this name once again, and it's going to be cloud. And then for the connection name, I'm going to call this one connect to ADLS. You can give it any name. And then for the type, I'm going to choose Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 ADLS Gen 2. And then I'm going to need my server name. So this is going to be my portal. Now I'm going to come to this ADLS resource that I created. And then in the resource, I want to choose my storage account. So this is going to be fabric shortcode one one. That's my storage account and then i'm going to scroll down and under the settings i'm going to choose endpoint and under the endpoint i'm going to scroll down and then i can see under the data lake storage i want to copy this data lake storage which include the dfs.co.windows.net so that's going to be my server name i'm going to copy that and add back to my connection i'm going to paste here control v to paste and for the full path i'm going to use just four slash and i'm going to scroll down and then for the authentication mode i can choose either the key the o authentication or the shared access signature sas or service principal but i want to choose the key so i need the account key again i'm going to come back to my azure portal 
and then still under the storage account i'm going to scroll up and then under the security and networking i want to choose the access keys and then i can use this key one or key two but i'm going to use this key one so i'm going to click on show and copy this key so it has to be key not the connection string and i'm going to come back here and paste the key here and i'm going to scroll down and i'm going to choose the same privacy level none and very importantly we need to allow this connection to be used with on premises data gateway so when you click on this you're going to see that connection credential used on an on-premises gateway can be accessed by gateway machine admins so please check this box and then click on create okay so i'm going to scroll up i can see that this has been nicely created so these are the two things we need to do in order to successfully get the data from the sql server to the fabric warehouse and then we can build our report and of course we can schedule the load and then i can go on to my mirror workspace that's empty and at the bottom here i'm going to switch to data warehouse experience and then i want to create a warehouse so click on that i'm going to call this data from sql server and then let's just go sql server one and then i want to choose create beautiful so our data warehouse is created and of course i can see that it's absolutely not under the schema so i can go on and choose new data pipeline and i'm going to call this data pipeline data from sql again you can give it any name and then click on create okay so we're going to see this copy data into warehouse copy assistant so i'm not going to use this copy assistant so i'm going to click on cancel and just cancel so i want to use activity so i'm going to come to this activity and click on this copy data and then i want to add to canvas so i want to show you how we can do all this using the canvas so this is going to be copy data and then under the general i can give this a meaningful name let's just call it get data from sql server and then i can even specify the time out and then the try upon failure but that's not needed for this task so i want to come to this source now for the source i want to get data externally from my on-premise sql server so i want to choose sql server and then i can go on and click on this drop down and i can see the connect to sql server that we just created not too long so click on connect to sql server connection and then we can click on test connection it's like a linked service in azure platforms we want to check whether there's a connection between the on-premise data gateway we downloaded and the connection we created beautiful connection successful that is lovely and i can click on this chevron for the connection type i want to scroll down and choose sql server and then i can scroll down and now i can either import a table or the query or stop procedure i'm going to head over to my sql server management studio so i'm going to come back here and then now let's just grab some few rows from this you know data set so let's just say we want to see top um 10 records from the sales millions of rows table so i can execute and there we go so we can see all the columns now, so i can modify this in a query i can get rid of this and then i can get rid of the same color i can use the where clause so i can see where i can use the year function and then on the order date column so i want to check where the order date is equal to 2008 and then we also want to pick from the month of january so i can also specify the month function and then i want to call the order date column so i want to show whether where it is equal to month of january and i can put in a semicolon and of course we're going to indent this anyway so i'm going to just come here and you know break this down and i can even break this down so let's make it more readable for us to go through okay so i can go on and execute this query so there we go so we have quite some thousand of rows i'm going to go ahead and copy this query i'm going to copy that and come back to my online platform and then i'm going to come to the use query i want to use a query and then i'm going to scroll down and i'm going to paste the query in this box and then i can click on preview data amazing so our data is now visible in the preview data window so i can just scroll down. i can check it out i can scroll to the right lovely so i want to close this for now and this is sorted for the source now for the destination this is going to be where we want to launch the data so we want to land data internally in our workspace so i want to choose the workspace and then for the workspace data store type i want to click on this and choose warehouse and then 
I can select the warehouse. So basically, I've got this data from SQL Server 1 warehouse we just created not too long. So click on that. And then I can even you know open, but that's not needed. So we can decide to use an existing table if we have any one, but we want to create a new table. So I want to choose auto create. I'm going to call this one DBO for the schema, and I want to call this sales as the name of the table. And then I want to scroll down. So beautiful, everything is looking good. And then for the color mapping, now this is not needed, everything is fine. Now I'm going to focus on the settings. Now this is very important for this ingestion to work and it's super important. Now I'm going to just you know move this up a little bit so that we can see what's going on. Now it is important we enable staging, okay? And of course, this is the interim you know environment where our data is going to be stored. So this must be checked, and for now, for the data store type, we can only use the external data store type so i'm going to choose the external data store type and then for the staging account connection i'm going to come here and then i can use the connect to adls the azure data lake story that we created the connection so that is absolutely important now i'm going to come to the azure portal and then I can you know show you now this is basically my storage account you know fabric short code 101 and then i can come here i can see under my containers i've got this fabric container created and then i've got this you know sales data directory which is in my azure portal so i'm going to come back here and this is going fine i'm going to click on test connection amazing connection successful now this is example of what is called linked service in the azure platform so this is working fine and we're making progress so for the storage path i can click on this browse and so for the root folder i want to choose the fabric container which is exactly um the same thing we have in the container so i want to choose that and then i'm going to wait for the directory now the directory is the sales data that i created like a folder so i'm going to wait for that to come up and there we go sales data so i want to choose that to click ok so that's all that's been sorted and that's all we need to do under the settings so it is really important we have um, connection to our ADLS that is super important now because we have that for millions of rows of course we can you know load all this at the same time because I'm um, just going to take a lot of time and it's going to consume a lot of resources so we want to actually schedule this so that's going to actually you know move in batch so I'm going to come um, to the home tab and I want to choose schedule so I can see that I can schedule my data pipeline so I can turn it on and then for the repeat, I can choose the frequency. Let's say I want to actually do um, by you know minutes. I can specify every five minutes. And then for the start date and time, I can click on this um, calendar icon. And I want to start today. I want to start now. So click outside so I can see the today's date and the current time. And then for the end, now depending on when you want to end your scheduling of your data pipeline you can specify so i want to end let's say by tomorrow monday so i'm going to specify the time and then click outside there we go so i'm going to scroll down and then i can choose the time zone so this is fine anyway because i'm in london so i want to choose apply and then i want to scroll up so this has now you know be sorted i can click on cancel and then i can click on validate to check if there's an error or if there's any problem so you can see your pipeline has been validated and everything is looking good no error we found click on close and then we can click on the run and want to save and run the data pipeline so this has been saved and then you can see it's running and then we're going to wait for the pipeline to complete the execution amazing the activity status is succeeded so our data pipeline executed perfectly so there was no error so i can click under the or click on this get data from sql activity name and we can see what's going on so this is the flow so the source is sql server so you can see the data in red we have 37.519 mb and then the number of rows is 93,672 and then we can see the staging and this is the Azure Data Lake Storaging tool and this is why we have to enable the staging and we can see the destination this is our fabric warehouse and then we have 93672 and then we can see the status the time and other information beautiful I'm going to close this for now and I'm going to come back to my warehouse that I created and then there we go so we can see we have the 
sales table and then we can wait for all the contents to deploy beautiful now i want to create a power bi report on on that now for now i'm not able to create measure so i will click on new report this is what i found you have to click on the new report first and then we can choose the table if you have more than one click on continue okay so we have our power bi and this is where we have the data analysis part of this project so we want to perform some analysis now of course we have all these you know tables and i'm just going to quickly um come back to my warehouse and then i'm going to see the new measure enabled so this is like writing the dax measure in the power bi desktop and of course in the service so let's want to see the total sales so i'm going to use the sum x function so i'm going to iterate over the sales table and then i want to take the sales table of this and the sales column i can close the bracket and press enter so that measure has been created so i want to create i want to count all the number of rows in this sales table so i want to choose new measure and then for this measure i'm going to call it um total transaction so i'm going to use the count rows dax function the count rows and i want to count all the number of rows in the sales table so i can close the parentheses and i can press enter to commit the dax formula so i'm going to come back to my untitled report so I'm going to come back here and then let's just create a simple report. I want to see the total sales measure I created and then we want to see by product name. So I'm going to choose the product name. This is going to create for us our report. So there we go. And then I want to click outside the visual and then we want to grab the total number of transactions. So I'm going to create this in form of a card. So I'm going to turn this to a card. And there we go, you can see the data has actually increased from 93,000 plus to 187,000 plus. Now, this is beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and um, save this file with Ctrl S. So, I'm going to call this data from SQL report and click on save. Okay, that has been saved. Now, I can go on or come back to my data pipeline. And then, in the data pipeline, I want to check the next minute or when the next um, upload of the data from my SQL server is going to be ingested into the table. Uh, I'm going to click on this schedule and then I want to check. Okay, so the next refresh is in three minutes. Now, so I'm going to wait and pause this video for the next three minutes. Now, I'm going to come back here and quickly check how many records we've got. So, of course, I'm going to click on edit and then I want to click on this refresh icon when I click on the refresh so for now we have 187,000 so I'm just going to go ahead and even apply in a formatting I want to come to the colored values I want to choose none for the display unit so we can see we have 187,344 so I'm going to press ctrl s to save and then I'm going to watch out for my schedule and then we can see we have two more minutes for the next data to be uploaded into the same warehouse. I'm going to pause this video and then come back to that in a moment. Okay, so we have less than a minute for the next refresh. Okay, so we can see we have next four minutes. So this simply means the data has been refreshed. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to come back to my report. And when I click on the report, of course, nothing has changed. Now, this is the moment of truth. I'm going to click on this refresh and let's see what happened. Amazing. So you can see it has increased to 281,016 records. So our scheduling is working pretty fine. So every five minutes, our data continue to you know refresh itself. And of course, we have more data from the SQL server. So with this, we can easily get all the 34 millions of rows from SQL Server to our data warehouse for downstream analysis without using a lot of resources at the same time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please like this video, share with your friends, comment, and follow me for more data engineering and data analytics tutorials. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.